art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. Hi there, everybody. Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to self-defense on TikTok. Now, of course, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button, click the thumbs up button, and click that little bell so you can get notified anytime I make a new video. And also, if you're interested in training with me online, all the information to do so is on our website, kenpo360.com. Information about that is in the description box down below. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to look up self-defense oh, on TikTok. Oh, well, of course, we immediately get the... Uh, Detroit, dust, Detroit Urban Survival Tactics guy. So, uh, yeah, why not jump on the bandwagon and watch some of, of his stuff? Now, of course, you know, this guy has made quite a name for himself um, within the self-defense community, partially because of his, you know, um, the fact that he does teaches sometimes questionable techniques. Um, but then he's also made quite a name for himself because... Um, you know, he's one hell of a marketer and I love the fact, I will say one thing about him that I love is that he, you cannot deter him, you know? Um, now of course I'm listening to this it, without any audio and that's just for copyright purposes. Um, so you know, you'll have to, you know, forgive me with that. All right. So the first thing he does, so he has a hand on the shoulder and he has a gun pushed underneath his neck. All right. And so he's going to reach up. And he's going to make a strip down while moving his head in the opposite direction. And then he's going to do a cross clear to point the gun at the guy. And then this is, <laughs> and then he holds the gun like this. All right. Um, so let's talk, let's talk about that clear. Let's talk about where the good parts are, where the bad parts are. Okay, for starters, a lot of self-defense people have an issue with people teaching gun disarms and defenses against a gun. And I have an issue with those people. Um, because what they say is that disarming a gun is so profoundly dangerous that um, you shouldn't even teach it. But that seems really silly to me because fighting is profoundly dangerous. If I follow you to your logical conclusion on that, I'm going to say you shouldn't learn martial arts. Don't get in fights. There you go. Martial arts done. You don't need to study martial arts. <laughs> um, no, like part of studying martial arts, especially self-defense, is to prepare for the worst case scenario. A hundred percent. If someone puts a gun to your face and they ask you for something you can give them, give me your wallet, give me your keys, yeah, give them your wallet, give them your keys, don't fight back. I don't think any gun disarming guy is telling you to be have someone be like, give me 20 bucks, and you're like, ninja. Like, no, it's that they're putting you in a position where they're, where they're likely going to kill you or they're asking for something you can't give them. So they put that gun to your throat and, you know, they tell you to get on your knees or they tell you to come with them. These are things you can't give them and you have to fight back and you're probably going to die anyways. You might as well die fighting. Um, and I'll be honest, a plan must be better than having no plan. Um, so I, I disagree with people who say you should never teach gun disarms. I just think context matters a lot when it comes to gun disarms. Um, one thing I'm seeing here, and I think this is important just for um, training purposes, um, is this right here where uh, his finger is on the trigger. So whenever we are training uh, with guns at all, uh, we want to keep our finger off of the trigger, even if it's just a training gun. And that's just to maintain good tr trigger discipline. You do what you play. So if you spend 10,000 hours practicing with a fake gun with your finger deep in the trigger um, and then you will go to carry a real gun, there's a chance you may also hold it this way, which could result in, um, especially if it's like a, a real hair trigger on that gun, it could result in you accidentally firing it. So even when you're training with fake guns, you want to keep your finger out of the trigger guard uh, so that you're training good trigger discipline. So... First thing he does is he does a basic strip, okay? So this strip, and the idea behind this strip is that, that he's pulling the gun in one direction and moving his head in the opposite direction, expediating how 
uh, long the weapon is actually on him. What we want to do anytime we're stripping a gun is we want to get out of what we call the field of fire. So this is what we call the line of fire. And the field of fire is anything that is in front of that muzzle. So anything's right in front of it. So technically he is still in, he's removed himself from the field of fire, sorry, from the line of fire. He's removed himself from the line of fire, but he's not removed himself from the field of fire quite yet. But he's put himself in a somewhat safe position. Now what's going to inevitably happen here is this guy is going to immediately pull away and start fighting the gun. So this may not be the best grip, um, but you know, this is like a, a generally like a, a, a good start, I suppose, to um, getting that gun away. And then he's going to come around uh, and grab at the gun. So let me see if I can isolate that moment. He's so fast, it's almost impossible to isolate it. There it is. Cool. So this is this position here where you're grappling the actual barrel of the gun is both an excellent position and a terrible position. So where is it excellent? On a big ass gun like this, it's perfect because when you're grabbing it with a full fist grip, you know exactly which way the muzzle is pointing at all times. So you can literally direct it where you need it to go. So even if it were to fire, it fires off in that direction. There's a lot of people who say if you grab a gun like this and the gun fires that, um, that the slide moving is going to like tear your hand asunder and destroy your hand. Um, the Gracies put a video out years ago of them just holding the gun and firing it. And um, no, that's not true. Um, if this was a revolver, I wouldn't want to do that because when a revolver fires, uh, gas escapes. Um, and so that would burn the shit out of your hand. But uh, no, you aren't gonna blow your fingers off grabbing the gun like this. Whereas this grip sometimes an issue though, um, is that not everyone has a big fat ass gun like this. So for example, if you have like a, a Ruger LC9, which is like a really small compact gun, there's not a lot of real estate for you to even grab on the muzzle without putting your fingers in, so not on the muzzle, on the barrel, to grab on the barrel without putting your fingers in front of the muzzle. And if obviously if your fingers are in front of the muzzle and the gun fires, that's a completely different story that's gonna blow your hands off. Um, and so then what he's going to do is he's going to strip towards the thumb. So, the, so what we're going to see is that he's got this here and he's going to strip this towards the thumb. And this is because if you look at the grip, if I'm holding on to something, effectively my this is this spot here all the way to my thumb is the weakest spot. And anything along the, the fingers and the back of the hand are the strong part of the grip. And so if I'm grabbing onto something, I always want to strip it or if I'm trying to remove something from someone's hands, I always want to strip it towards that fault in the grip. And then this is uh, <laughs> this is kind of the silly part. Um, so not only does he um, hold the gun in this really odd way, um, which is just not how you hold a gun. Uh, it, this offers no stability. Um, and uh, you've already got the gun out of their hand, so there's no real reason to keep holding on to it. Um, but the, my biggest issue here is that his instinct is to walk towards the guy. And we don't want to do that. So in um, like Kapap training, they always say that when if you do remove a gun from someone's hand, you want to create as much space as possible as quickly as possible. Because when you take a gun out of someone's hand, they inevitably are going to try to get their gun back. So their first instinct is going to be reach back towards a gun. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to be sitting there wrestling over a gun if you can avoid it, especially if the gun's already in your hand. So instead, what you want to do, if you can get the gun out of someone's hand, is you want to instantly make as much space as possible and literally put you between them and the gun so i'm gonna literally hold the gun back towards my hip and and make space before i put myself in a position because if i rip the gun out of your hand and then immediately present it at you um what's going to happen is that you are going to immediately grab the gun back especially since i just did that so like i just showed you how to get the gun out of my hand so I, so you're going to try to get the gun back and so you want to create space as quickly as possible um, so overall, I mean, this technique, if I, I'm, I don't know why I feel like I need to rate it, but I feel like I need to rate it. I would give it, you know, I give it like a seven out of 10. Um, you know, it's overall functional that the, you know, he, he doesn't get out of the field of fire, but he does get out of the line of fire. Um, and this is a fairly reliable strip that he was using, um, 
to remove the gun. I just don't like how he takes this real wackadoo stance with the gun and obviously moving in after you remove a gun from someone's hand um, is especially stupid. Um, but, you know, I know this guy is really controversial and I know gun disarms as a whole are controversial. And that's and, and I said at the top of this video, but I'm going to reiterate it, that if you're studying self-defense, but you are not just studying how to fight someone who has a gun, you are not studying self-defense. Because especially if you live in America, there's a lot of guns in this country. And um, you have to assume that every fight is a gunfight. I think it's a mistake a lot of people make, is that they are just assuming that their opponent doesn't have a knife or doesn't have a gun. And at the end of the day, um, if you have an instructor and the instructor is saying, well, I don't teach knife because it's too dangerous. I don't teach guns because it's too dangerous. Um, well, that would be the equivalent of me just saying, I don't teach ground fighting because it's too dangerous, or I don't teach punching because it's too dangerous. Um, and there is no such thing as a good knife defense. And there is no such thing as a good, um, gun defense. Those are equalizers as tools. Their whole job is to make it so that if you're a good fighter or you're stronger or bigger, that it doesn't matter because that person now has a knife, that person now has a gun. That's the whole point of them. Uh, so you're always going to be at a tremendous disadvantage. But if you have literally no plan and literally no experience defending against those tools and you encounter them in a self-defense situation, you have literally no chance of survival. If you at least have some idea of how to deal with them, you will have some chance of survival. And that's kind of what I think about it. Um, and of course, as I, as I always say, make sure that, um, you know, you aren't fighting if you don't have to. If they present a gun in your face in this way and they say, give me your wallet, you go, yeah, man, here's my wallet. They say, give me your keys. Yeah, dude, here's my keys. No self-defense guy is saying that you don't comply it's when you can't comply. Self-defense happens when you cannot comply. That's really important to understand. So if you say, oh, I don't need self-defense, I'll just run away. I just, I don't need self-defense because I'll just give the guy what he wants. It's self-defense techniques. What we are teaching is literally designed for when you can't do those things. All right, because they put that gun under your throat and they say, and they say, get on your knees or come with me. You can't do that. If you do that, you are surely going to die. Uh, so I'm going to fight back in those instances. Um, uh, overall, the, the dust guy, uh, I'm not going to say that he's like an excellent self-defense instructor, um, but it, it did bring up a really interesting conversation that I think was worth having. Um, so yeah, ultimately, uh, I, I had no idea that's where this video was going, but I'm happy we went there. Um, now, of course, if you know that a lot of people don't actually watch these entire videos before they comment on them. So uh, to prove to me that you made it all the way to the end of the video, what does he got on? He's got a black hoodie. Yeah, let's include the word black, the term black hoodie in your uh, comment to me down below so that I know you made it to the end. And of course, if you're interested in training with me online, you can do that at kenpo 360 Dot com. All the information to that is down below. And if you live in the Indianapolis area, all the information to train with me is also at the school of self .com and in the description box down below. Finally, so many things to say at the end of the video. You are here at the end of the video. You've watched me through this entire thing and through that little pitch that I just did. And you're still watching, so you're clearly entertained. So why aren't you subscribed? What's wrong with you? Click that subscribe button, click the thumbs up button, and click the bell so you can get notified anytime I release a new video. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.